I'm hearing a noise that I don't like. In my last video I showed you this absolute beast of a pump. Even though it looks like a small jet engine, it is actually a vacuum pump. This is a turbomolecular pump. In this case it is a Pfeiffer TPH2101. And these pumps are used to create a high vacuum. They are basically the pump you use when a normal rotary vane pump like this one here does not suffice and you want to get to lower pressures. In my last video I asked you guys if you would like me to mount this pump on my vacuum chamber which would mean that I basically have a pump the same size as my chamber and most of you said yes. The problem is that I don't have a flange to mount this pump to my chamber. I need an adapter from the DN320 flange right here to the DN250 flange on the pump. So I asked Visse Vacuum, which is the same company that built this absolutely beautiful chamber, if they could help me. And they actually said yes. Um, I still have no idea why they let me do this stuff. And the brilliant thing is, they said I could weld the flange myself. Since I had no prior experience in welding, I was allowed to practice on a few pieces of stainless steel first. And not to brag, but I must say, for my first welds I'm quite pleased. Afterwards we took a DN320 blind flange and, using a beautiful lathe, created a hole in this flange. Now it can be connected to a DN250 ring using a short pipe section. The initial tech welds were made by the owner of Whistle Vacuum to ensure everything was correctly aligned. But then I got to weld the flange on the welding turntable. The welds certainly won't win a beauty contest, but they are made by myself and made with love. And the helium leak test showed no leaks at all. I don't know how to thank this vacuum for their help. They didn't even ask for a shout out or anything else. So the only thing I can tell you is that if you ever need vacuum equipment, this vacuum is definitely the right partner. You can find a link to their website in the video description. So I would say let's mount the pump on my chamber. Lifting this pump on top of my chamber is easier said than done since it weighs approximately 40 kilograms, but I will do my best. I actually thought about using both of my small vacuum pumps and use a T-piece to connect them to this K40 flange right here. But since I want to compare this pump with my small TurboWack 50, I think it won't be fair to use two of them. So I will just use this K40 to K16 adapter. <laughs> okay, the chamber is currently pumping down. I'm monitoring the pressure using my DIY pressure gauge controller. There will be an upcoming video about this as soon as I get the new PCB version manufactured. Um, what I want to say is thank you to the person that made this Python interface. You are great. I'm going to use it to record the pressure and the pressure drop so we can compare the two uh, pumps with each other. Here you can see the controller for the huge tow molecular pump. I'm using my Pfeiffer rotary vane vacuum pump as a roughing pump and I have two vacuum gauges. The BPG 402S and the PSG 500S at the bottom right there. The PSG 500S won't be able to record pressures uh, at a certain point, so then I'm going to rely on the BPG. If you are wondering why my vacuum chamber is in this corner here, this allows me to mount it to my workbench and gives the whole setup a little bit more rigidity. It's still not what you would consider uh, completely safe, but I think it's safe enough. And I'm really interested to see how the pressure behaves once I turn this thing on. I have to admit that I'm rarely that nervous when turning something on, but here we go. The pump is currently doing a self-check. 
and then it will spin up. Okay, it started spinning. I'm hearing a noise that I don't like. <laughs> nope, I'm not doing that. Uh, at around 10% its maximum speed, I monitored the speed using my multimeter. It has an analog 0 to 10 volt output. You heard it, the pump makes noises you don't want to hear. Uh, so I'm not spinning this up any further. But I think I will try to mount the pump I did not disassemble. Fill in the oil I put into this pump, into the other one. I am basically doing an oil transfusion. <laughs> the oil is darn expensive and I only had enough oil for one pump, which is why I have to transfer it to the other one. Okay, I have installed the other pump I've not taken apart, so if this also makes the same noises, I know that I'm not uh, guilty of destroying the other pump. I'm just keeping my hand uh, on the pump here to feel if any vibrations occur. 6%. This pump approximately takes 11 minutes to get up to its full speed. 7, 9, the same noises and you can feel quite uh, the vibration coming from the pump. In my opinion it shouldn't sound that way. Interestingly it happens at 10% uh, of the speed. I'm wondering if it's a area of resonance for this pump. So maybe if we exceed this range uh, it will stop but We are at 12% total speed and the noise actually stopped. But man, I don't think it's supposed to make that noise. I mean, it feels so freaking wrong. Jesus. Uh, if I wouldn't st be standing right next to it, I would just go away and let it spin up. Um, but that way I don't I no, no. no. Interestingly, it seems to be caused by the acceleration of the pump because as soon as I turn off the power supply, the noise and the vibrations stop. So it's not the rotor spinning that causes this, I think. Because right now the rotor is spinning at 13% of its maximum speed and it's not making any vibrations. Interesting. I just uh, turned the power supply back on and the pump is accelerating but doesn't make any noise. We're at 16%, 17%, it basically feels like it's not running at all, 20%, 25 I really don't get it. I, <laughs> and I'm wondering if my other pump behaves the same way, because this thing, I could balance a coin on it, and it's at 30%, 40%, 50%, 50%. I should wear a um, pulse measuring device, <laughs> 60% and right now the pump again doesn't make any vibrations at all. The pressure is dropping, we are at 80%, 96% and just to prove to you that there are no vibrations at all, uh, I balance this coin here on the pump. <laughs> Which is pretty, pretty awesome, I think, considering that the pump is spinning at 30,000 RPM. Nice! We are currently at a pressure of 2.6 times 10 to the power of minus 6 millibars. This time, because I was so worried about the vibrations, I didn't uh, record a pressure curve. 
So I will now uh, stop the pump, let it uh, slow down, then start it again to record the actual pressure curve. Okay, the pump stands still right now and the pressure is at around 0.2 millibars. Let's turn this pump on and see how quickly it evacuates my chamber. And let's see if it, the pump again makes those terrifying noises. Yeah, you can again feel some vibration building up. I think you just have to push past this um, speed where some kind of weird resonance is happening. So in under 10 minutes basically, or approximately 10 minutes, 11 minutes, the speed it took the pump to get to its full speed, we reached a pressure of 2.6 times 10 to the power of minus 6 millibars. <laughs> which is awesome I think uh, yeah now that I know that the pump I didn't mess with makes the same noises at around 10% speed I'm trying to restore my honor and that's why I reinstalled the pump I disassembled and reassembled again <laughs> you can see how stressed I am by my uh, sweat on the pump here <laughs> everything looks good the pump is running fine so I'm very relieved that I didn't mess it up uh, when working on it. Um, we are currently at a pressure of 4 times 10 to the power of minus 6 millibars and yeah, looks great. We are at 100% speed. Uh, I'm very satisfied. And just to demonstrate to you that I didn't mess up the balance or anything, you can see that, well you can't see, but the rotor is spinning. I mean you can hear it and you can see the voltage at 10 volts which means 100% speed and still I can balance a 5 cent coin uh, on its edge on this pump, which is just great. I have now tested both pumps several times. This is again the one I didn't mess with. So I did the starter procedure and shutdown procedure several times with each pump and they all the time make this noise at around 10% full speed. And at this point, I don't think it is caused by resonance. This sound at 50% full speed, I think is caused by resonance and it also fades out much slower, but yeah, if you know what this could be, let me know in the comments. Right now the pump is at 100% uh, speed and you wouldn't even know that it is running if you wouldn't feel that the pump is a little bit warm. To compare both pumps, I am now going to evacuate the chamber with my small TurboVac 50. You can see the sheer size difference between this pump and the large Pfeiffer pump. Now for the results. If you compare the pump down curve, you might think that the small TurboVac 50 outperforms the large pump here. That actually just looks that way, because the small TurboVac 50, because it is smaller, spins up way faster. If we look at both of these curves in a logarithmic scale, you can see that as soon as the large pump spins up, it outperforms the small one by a long shot. In case you are wondering what those spikes in the pressure curve are, I think the first spike which appears in both curves is the moment when the BPG402 switches from its Pirani measuring mode into the ionization gauge mode. I've noticed this artifact several times and the ones lower down the curve I think are just measuring errors or some kind of artifact. It might be possible that I have a leak in my chamber which would be way more noticeable with a small pump than with the large one. And yeah, it was a very fun video. Would you consider it safe what I did here? Depends. Um, but it was very fun, uh, exciting. Regarding the vibrations and the sounds caused by these pumps, I'm absolutely certain it's not the pump's fault. On the one hand, they are not meant to be bolted to a flimsy stand like this one. They are meant to be fixed to a chamber bolted to the ground and yeah, my stand for the vacuum chamber is basically a toy compared to what this pump is meant for. And I'm pretty certain that this could be a reason that maybe vibrations can build up. On the other hand, these pumps have not been maintained for over 12 years and I think it's amazing that they even work as good as they do. Considering the tolerances and the speed at which they turn, it's just a miracle of engineering in my opinion and I'm absolutely satisfied with how these pumps performed. My next video with the vacuum chamber will probably be a physical vapor deposition using thermal evaporation. Due to the support of my Patreons I was able to buy a Variac which I needed to get my thermal evaporation system up and running. So thank you very much, I'm really grateful for your support. And if you want to become a Patreon there is a link in the video description in case you're interested.
I really hoped you liked today's video and other than that, thank you a lot for watching.